Hello, welcome back. Dr. Glidden here to give you a quick overview of cholesterol. And if I were you, I would put a heavy weight on your head because your head is about to spin around and pop right off of your shoulders. Everything that you know about cholesterol is wrong. Not for any fault of your own, but because you have been a victim of misleading pharmaceutical propaganda for the last 50 years. I'm taking off the gloves with this one, folks. Cholesterol is a waxy steroid substance in the body. Every cell of your body, the wall around your cell, like the wall around a castle, is made from cholesterol. All of your sex hormones, testosterone, estradiol, estrone, estriol, progesterone, pregnenolone, all the stress hormones, cortisol, uh, dihydroepiandosterone, all of 75% of the white matter of your brain and all of the insulation that wraps around your nerves is made from cholesterol. You think it's important? Yeah, you better bet your life it's important. It's so important to the human body that your liver makes it. This is how statin drugs work. Statin drugs create inflammation in the liver which halts the body's production of cholesterol and then when you put people on a fat-free diet their cholesterol goes into the gutter. Cholesterol we also get from uh, the good foods that we recommend. Full fat milk, cheese, eggs, butter, real butter, not margarine, uh, meat cooked rare, uh, liver uh, and organ meat loaded with cholesterol and the mighty chicken egg. All right, with All these things are high in cholesterol and cholesterol is not the enemy. Uh, the cholesterol molecule is transported through the body by different lipoproteins and these lipoproteins get all the press. You know them as HDL, LDL, and VLDL which are very creative acronyms uh, for high density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein, and very low density lipoprotein. Not a lot of creativity in the wonderful world of biochemistry. Now the difference between HDL, LDL, and VLDL is really just the size of the molecule. There's nothing inherently wrong with HDL, LDL, or VLDL, and there are no diseases that are caused by cholesterol. There are some diseases that will cause high cholesterol, but there are no diseases that are caused by high cholesterol. High cholesterol in and of itself is harmless. It does not do anything good, bad, or ugly. All right? Nor is there anything inherently wrong with HDL, LDL, or VLDL. Um, you could s suck all of the LDL out of uh, somebody's body, purify it if you could do that, and shoot it into yours, and nothing bad would happen. HDL, LDL, and VLDL are different uh, clinical earmarks of how well your body is handling oxidative stress and free radical damage. The more free radical damage is happening in your body, the higher the LDL number is and the lower the HDL number is. So we use this blood work just as kind of a down and dirty way to assess somebody's ability to manage their free radicals and how well their antioxidant capacity of their body is working. But again, there's nothing inherently wrong with any of these molecules. You've been misled. Now, here's the relative size of a cholesterol molecule as it's floating through the artery or a blood vessel. Here's a cholesterol molecule and here's a red blood cell. It's about the same size, a little bit smaller. Now, atherosclerosis is the buildup of a cholesterol plaque or a plaque inside an artery. And this is, of course, what causes the artery to become congested and then the blood flow backs up and everything downstream from that dies. And if that happens in the heart, your heart tissue dies and you get a heart attack. But cholesterol is not the problem. Cholesterol is, in fact, the cure and the, the, the thing that the body is using to fix the problem. Thinking that cholesterol causes uh, blocked arteries or atherosclerosis is like thinking that uh, firemen cause fires. Well, the bigger the fire, the more firemen there are. 
So therefore, a fireman must cause fire. The, the more atherosclerosis there is, the more cholesterol there is. So therefore, cholesterol causes atherosclerosis. It's a completely ass-backwards way of thinking. Here's really what happens. And all you have to do to understand this is be a hiker. So in rivers, as the river wanders you know, through the countryside, it, it bends and twists and turns. And at the bends of the river is a beach. At the bend of every river, you'll see sand and silt get deposited. And this happens because of fluid dynamics. It's just the way that the, the thing that happens is nature transports silt and sediment and particulate matter in water downstream. It tends to pile up at the bend of the river. And as more of it piles up, the river bends more, and then more piles up, and then the river bends more. And finally, you get the generation of something called an oxbow lake, which you see right here which is where there has been the buildup of so much silt and sand <clears throat> that it has actually cut the river off from that part of the river. So now you have a little lake and then the river meandering underneath it. It's all from fluid dynamics. The same thing happens in the human body. Arteries always get clogged where they bend. And Dr. Wallach figured this out 20 years ago, you know, after overseeing 26,000 autopsies. You just do a couple of those and you can see that the artery starts to become clogged where it bends. Now listen, if cholesterol was a problem, it would be a problem in the veins as well as the arteries. But it's only a problem in the arteries. It's never a problem in the veins. This is another nail in the coffin against cholesterol being the culprit because if it was cholesterol that was the culprit, it would happen in the veins also but it's not. And here's what happens. You eat all the wrong food. You eat wheat, barley, rye, and oats, and oils, and fried foods, and the skins of baked potatoes, and well-done meat, and nitrates in meat. There's crap in the food, crap in the air, crap in the water. Your body needs this much nutrition. It only has this much nutrition. So it can't fight the inflammation that's caused by the food. So you eat food. It introduces free radicals into the body. The free radicals travel in the bloodstream and pile up at the bend of the arteries, just like sand in a river. When free radicals pile up against the bend of an artery, they create oxidative damage and the, the artery starts to tear. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a bad thing because if the artery tears, you're going to bleed to death. So the body wants to stop that at all costs. The body has wisdom. So it rushes to fix, uh, stop the leak. And what does it use? It uses what it has a lot of, cholesterol. So it puts a cholesterol bandage on the part of the artery that's starting to leak, but that of course causes more free radicals to pile up right there because that's the nature of fluid dynamics. And then you get more inflammation and more cholesterol deposition and more inflammation and more cholesterol deposition and then the whole artery is clogged. The cholesterol is the body's bandage. It is not the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem is oxidative damage caused by eating the wrong foods and not having enough antioxidants in the body to fix it. Free radicals are in all of these foods. And most Americans eat all of these foods for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we wonder why we're sick. And then you go to your doctor and he tells you, oh, it's just aging or it's genetic. It's a crock of crap. You get clogged arteries because you've been eating all the wrong food all of your life and it's your doctor's fault. It's not your fault. Now, the fix for this is to stop eating those foods and to increase your intake of antioxidants. It's antioxidants suck up and neutralize the free radicals that are causing the damage kind of a no-brainer. So our goal here with antioxidants is 20,000 ORAC points a day of antioxidants. Longevity has a number of supplements that you can get that through. The new chocolate that they have has almost 17,000 ORAC points per piece. And then the brand new product that they have as of uh, November 
2010 is the cell shield um, RTQ. Uh, Pretty good. Cell shield RTQ has, I think, 14,000 ORAC points per piece or per capsule. That's very good. Beyond Tangy Tangerine also has it. And here's a little fun fact to know and tell. Selenium increases the effectiveness of antioxidants by you know, making numbers up here by factors of 100. So if you're ingesting antioxidants but no selenium, that's good. And they will work, but then when the body uses an antioxidant to work, it gets rid of it. When you have selenium, the body recycles the antioxidant. It's a particular molecule called glutathione that's a very potent antioxidant in the body that the body recycles in the presence of selenium. So selenium needs to be a first line treatment for the optimization of this cardiovascular system because it really kicks our antioxidant action into high gear. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, here's an interesting website that you might want to check out. This is a Russian doctor put this website together, ravenskov.nu. Uh, so, you know, if you need ammunition to convince medical professionals or healthcare professionals about the nonsense of cholesterol and its complete non-relationship with heart disease, go to this website. It's got all the bulleted points research over the course of decades that drive this point home. Cholesterol is your friend. It's not your enemy. Very good. Dr. Glidden with you. Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, we have more to come. Uh, over and out. Thanks for your time.